Hi, I'm Tamara Lackey, and on this episode of Redefined Show for Adorama TV, I speak with landscape, adventure, and travel photographer Michael Bonacore. He travels more than half the year teaching workshops for the Giving Lens in a multitude of countries, as well as working on special projects. And although he's not a professional voice actor, kind of sounds like one. Check it out. Hello, Michael. Hello, Tam. How are you? <laughs> How are you? I'm doing good. Do you have a radio voice? Have you done radio before? You have such a... No, I would love to do... One of my dreams when I was a kid actually was to be a, like a voice actor. Yeah. Like a voiceover kind of... I can't think of any job better than the guys that do like all those Pixar, Disney right, movies. Right, right. They literally go into a studio for three hours for a week. Right. And they get paid millions of dollars. And then, because I could see you being like the voice of a bear. Err, I'm a bear. Is that good? <laughs> Maybe better than that. <clears throat> That's how I used to talk to my dog. I, that was my dog voice when I had a, a boxer. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's no longer with I us. Know. But that's how I talked to him yeah, in that voice, yeah. and he uh, he loved it. Uh, practice it real quick. Err, I'm a bear. That was it? No. <laughs> how you were doing Err. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll circle back to that. Yeah, yeah. Make sure you edit this part out. <laughs> yeah, this will go. <laughs> uh, but visually, mm -hmm. you are a visual artist. Uh, yeah, that's what some people call me. But you shoot everywhere. You shoot a lot of things. I do. Some really cool projects. I do take a lot of photographs. Yep. I do uh, some pretty cool projects. Um, yeah, I travel the world maybe seven months a year. So I'm always seven out of the country. Seven months a year? I didn't yeah. know it was that much. Yeah, I'm always out of the country. Yeah. I'm, I'm on a plane to India next week. Wow. Yeah. Where are you going? Uh, Jaipur. And what for? I'm leading a workshop with the Giving Lens. Who is founded by one of your guests on this show? Mr. Mr. Colby Brown. Mr. Yeah. Colby Brown. Yeah. Shout out to Colby. Shout out. I know he'll like it. What are you doing for them? What exactly will this project be about? Because we were talking about, mm -hmm. you know, I talked to him earlier, and a lot of the work that um, you know I'm drawn to, to, towards do it has to do with how do you use art to make change? Yeah. And Giving Lens is right in there, and you've been doing a lot of work with them. Yeah. So I lead the photography workshops for the Giving Lens. Been doing it for probably four years. What we do is we take a group of six to 12 people from usually the United States, some Canada, some Europe, maybe some from random other places like Australia. <laughs> Throw in a couple them, Aussies. Yeah. <laughs> Throw in Throw a couple away. Aussies, you know, yeah, come on. Uh, we bring them to a foreign country, uh, Jordan, Peru, uh, Morocco, Tanzania, Uganda, and we work with a nonprofit on the ground uh, while we get into the country. So it's usually children based. So mm -hmm. what we do is we bring donated cameras and we teach local underprivileged children photography. And there's many reasons why we do this and um, we can talk about that, but it's, uh, it's really a rewarding uh, process where we really get to know these kids. These ki we're teaching these kids how to be artistic, how to um, express themselves through their art. Yeah. And it's incredibly rewarding, and, and most trips end in tears. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not, we don't go and just work with the kids. So we'll work with the kids for three, four days. And then we do the typical cool stuff that you, the country is known for. So Tanzania will go on safari after we work with the kids. In Uganda, we went gorilla trekking. Jordan will go to Petra and Wadi Rum Desert. Um, those kind of things. How many, uh, how many instructors are on a typical workshop and how many participants? We always have two instructors, maybe sometimes three. So sometimes I'll come on board just to do video okay. and also help instruct. So uh, sometimes two and a half, uh, you know, with me doing video and kind of helping out with the instruction. But usually it's two and we'll have anywhere from six to 12 participants per trip. Okay, and when you're doing actual photography instruction, just mm -hmm. that part, what do you find is the most difficult thing to teach people? Like, what is the hardest thing for people to get? I think the hardest thing on these trips especially is for people to get out of their comfort zone. Yeah. So what I mean by that is a lot of times the best way to get portraits of people, the best way to ingrain yourself in a culture and really be able to storytell that culture through your f photography is getting to know the people. Right, right. You can't just shoot from the hip, walking down the street. You really want to get those 
the real stories, the, the stories that are conveyed through your photographs, you have to get to know the person. You have to get the people comfortable. Uh, and the only way to do that is by talking to them. And yeah. a lot of times you won't speak the same language, et cetera, et cetera, but you have to try. You just have to try in any way you can. It's a lot of... Uh... Yeah, exactly. Know, a lot of hand signals. Uh, I always download a um, translate app on my yeah. phone before I travel, so what I can a, always. What a benefit that is! Like, yeah. it's amazing how mm -hmm. how relatively recently we've had access yeah. to something that amazing. It's amazing, and it helps. Yeah. And even if I can't, like, if I'm in Morocco, or you know, if, even if I can't pronounce what I'm reading, or even yeah. read it because it's a completely different character system, yeah. um, completely different letters, I can at least show it to them. Right. So I can say, hey. You know, and I can write what I want to say to them, right. and then show it to them. And um, but it takes a lot of people, a lot of time to get comfortable just being outgoing and going up to people yeah. and talking to them. That's probably the hardest thing that I face as a leader instructor on these trips. It's getting people out of their comfort zone to really approach and get to know people. But you see it progress throughout the week, ten days whatever the trip is, you see their comfort level progress. And by the end of the trip, they're going up to everyone and talking to everyone. And, and, uh, and I know they carry that over to their future travels, which yeah. means a lot to me. Yeah, amen. Tell me about your work in the Arctic. <laughs> How do you say that? The Arctic. <laughs> oh, very good. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I've been to the Arctic yeah. a bunch of times, a couple times. I shouldn't say a bunch. Uh, literally and, twice? Literally twice, actually. Okay. Uh, it, I guess it, it feels like a bunch. Yeah, it feels like a bunch, and I don't know if you consider Iceland the Arctic, but Arctic. Arctic. But yeah, if you consider Iceland the Arctic, then yeah. I've been there a couple times too. So. Okay. Um, so four times. Four times. Let's okay. say four. Let's go with four. Okay. And I've flown over a bunch. Yeah. So. Like a bunch. Yeah. yeah. A bunch. I see where you got. <laughs> Maybe there. twice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the first time I went was back in 2014. I was working for Smug Mug. Mm -hmm. uh, I was a VIP manager for Smug Mug and. One of my VIP photographers was Chris Burkhardt, yeah. who's a incredible, you know, surf adventure photographer. Three million Instagram followers. He's massive, uh, and he he was one of my VIPs. I, you know, worked on marketing plans for his Smug Mug site and everything like that. Right around that time, we were launching a film uh, division called Smug Mug Films, and I pitched Chris Burkhardt and I said, Hey, I think Chris Burkhardt would be an awesome guy to film for this series. Yeah. And Chris McCaskill, the founder of Smug Mug, was, he's, you know, Mr. Extreme. He loves everything cool and, you know, badass. So he let's was go like, risk our lives. yeah, he was like, yeah, let's go. He didn't come, but he was like, <laughs> he green light the project. So Sounds goes, super dangerous. You yeah, guys get out He there. wrote the check. That's yeah. all I needed, right? Yeah. So he writes the check, and uh, we go. So me and Anton Lormer, who's a filmmaker for Smug Mug, uh, go to Lofoten, Norway with Chris Burkhardt and three surfers, and we document Chris Burkhard taking these surfers into the frigid Arctic water. Yeah. And yeah, it was, when we first got in, it was kind of like, where's, you know, I'm in the Arctic. Yeah. I would expect Arctic. there to be nothing but white out, you know, snow conditions. And we got there and there was barely any snow. And we're like, well, what's going on? And it was March, and apparently they had a really dry winter. Climate change. Climate change, fake news. <laughs> and uh, apparently they had a really dry winter and uh, a really warm winter and, and all of a sudden we got in and we're just like, where's the snow? Like, it's not what we envisioned in our Right, head. yeah. And then, I mean, the snow gods must have heard us because right then the winds picked up, the clouds moved in, and we are just buried under a avalanche of a blizzard. Just insane conditions. And... Yeah, blasted through the night. We woke up. We had to dig the car out of like two feet of snow, three oh, feet of snow. Yeah. yeah, it was, it was really dig cool. Dig the car out under two feet of snow. Yeah, it was pretty intense. Wow. Yeah. Everything was you couldn't see anything. It was just complete whiteout. And and then we get down to the water, and it's still snowing. It's still blizzard-like conditions. Not as bad as the day before. And and we start filming, and it just I can't imagine how it felt to be in that water. Mm. Yeah, it was very cold. And to get to the water, you got to walk through, you know, waist deep snow. Yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, it was an what experience. What is the point of it? To, to, what is the point of it? Well, well first, it it, it's me. an amazing break. Yeah. The, the wave out there is really good. Uh, and 
So it's, it's for that, like you're going to yeah. suffer through this part. For a great wave. Yeah. But not only that, but it's kind of one of those things. It's like a bucket list thing, right? We all yeah. have these bucket list things we want to do. You can go surf in California. A California guy can go right outside his door and go sure. surf, right? And he could probably even maybe find better waves and he would get in the Arctic. But there's something about saying, I surfed in the Arctic, yeah. right? And Chris loves, to, Chris Burkhardt loves telling those stories, like those kind of buddy camaraderie uh, stories where he, you know, him and a couple buddies go do something that hasn't been done before. Yeah. He's got a new film out that's so cool, so inspirational, where they try to go surf in Iceland and they happen to go as the worst, or the worst storm in 25 years was hitting. And it's an amazing film. I encourage everyone What's to go watch. It it's called Under the Arctic Sky. Okay. And, uh, which is filmed in Iceland. Oh, so I guess I've it, heard of this. I guess yeah, Iceland yeah. is the Arctic. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> but it, it kind of follows that buddy kind of, you know, yeah. uh, camaraderie, doing something that people don't do. Uh, and anyway, so that was the trip to Norway. And not only that, but the pictures are amazing. So you're surfing this incredible wave. And you've got this majestic mountain in the background covered in snow. And it's such a cold look. And the sun shining through. And you've got this warm light hitting the surfer. But this frigid background. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. And, and it turned out to be a really cool film, very inspirational. Uh, we won a bunch of film festival awards. Oh, that's so yeah, cool. Yeah, it's got over a million views on Facebook now. Yeah. Or uh, uh, YouTube, sorry. All right, the other site. The other, that, that yeah. That <laughs> other video site. Yeah. yeah uh, Arctic Swell is what it's called. Okay. So look it up on YouTube yeah, and we'll do. yeah, check it out. It was fun to make and I fell in love with, with Norway at that moment. It's it's an incredible place with some of the most beautiful landscapes you'll ever see. And extraordinary light when you get it. Extraordinary light. Yeah. The light is absolutely incredible because you get these storm clouds and you know how light when it shines through a storm cloud is yeah. Yeah. It it's so beautiful, but there's times when you won't see the sky, the sun for five days at a time, yeah. Thanks so much, Michael, for that. We're gonna join in next time to hear a lot more detail about different kinds of work. But in the meantime, go ahead and subscribe to this channel and check out the immense amount of education you're gonna find on Adorama TV.